Hi, welcome to another video from Fivespire. My name is Pia. Today we're going to list the first 10 Linux commands that everyone at a minimum should know. These are not necessarily the commands you use the most day in and day out, but they are a good starting point for actually doing some useful things through the command line. So let's get started. First on our list is the list command ls. This command lists the contents of a directory or displays the information of a file. ls by itself will print the contents of the current directory. Common flags include dash "-a", to show all files, including hidden files, and dash "-l", to display the additional information in a long format. One useful tip with ls is setting up aliases for common ls option combinations. Fedora has some built in already, like ll for ls-l, or l dot to display hidden files in directories. You can type in alias to display all current aliases and add new aliases by using general format of alias space name equals the command in quotes. The one alias I always set up with ls is lsd, which displays contents with directories first in a long format and file sizes that are easy to read. Second is the cd command to change the current working directory. Pass it a directory path to change to that directory. You can type in cd dot dot to move up one folder and use cd dash to quickly change to the last working directory. As you can see as I change the directories you can see my command prompt will update accordingly to the new working directory. CD without any arguments sends you back to the, your home directory. The main thing to know about the CD command is the difference between absolute and relative path. Absolute means the full path address starting from the root directory, and relative is relative to your current working directory. If the full path to my documents folder is dash home dash pd dash documents, I can change to that directory by typing in the absolute path or if I'm already located in my home directory, I can just type in cd space documents. Third is the present working directory, pwd command, which is closely related with our last command, cd. When we start changing directories, it can be quite easy to lose track of where we are in the file system. The command prompt gives us the name of the current directory, but no information of parent directories or how deep we are in the file system hierarchy. You can use pwd command to find that out. All it does is print the current working directory as an absolute path. Fourth is the copy command, cp. This allows you to copy one or more files or directories. The syntax is cp, followed by any options, followed by the source files you want to copy, and finally the destination. CP is handy to quickly make backups. It is especially useful before you make changes to an important configuration file. You can copy the original configuration file to a backup version. By default, CP does not copy directories for safety reasons, but it's easily achieved. All you need to do is pass the dash R option to copy recursively, meaning the directory and every file and subdirectory are also copied. One thing to remember is that if you are copying to a file or directory that already exists, CP will just override it with zero warning. So be careful of actually overriding any important files. Coming in at 5 is the move command, MV. It is essentially the same as the CP command. It uses the same syntax as CP, which is MV, then options, then source file, then finally destination. The move command is used for two things, moving files to different directories or renaming a file. If you're moving a file outside its current directory and want to keep the same file name, you can just end the command with the target directory without specifying a file name. Just like the cp command, you have to be careful of possibly overriding existing files or directories because there will be no warning. Number six is the rm command. It is used to delete files or directories. 
When using RM, you have to be careful as deleting files through the command line will not place them in your trash folder. So you won't be able to undo the deletion if you ever feel like changing your mind. So be careful. Using remove on files that are write protected will prompt a confirmation message asking if you're sure. To ignore these messages, use the F option. RM by default does not work on directories. If you try to, a message cannot remove such directory display. You need to include the recursive option, dash R. You can also combine the dash R with the force flag to ignore write protected messages. The seventh command is make directory, mkdir. It creates directories so you can better organize your workspace. The make directory is a simple command. You can create a single directory or multiple directories by passing in multiple arguments. The dash p option must be used to create parent and subdirectories in a single command. Coming in at 8 is the substitute user, su command, and its close relative, sudo. su officially stands for substitute user, but I think switch user better describes the command. Using su allows you to switch to another user as long as you know that user's password. In most cases, it's for switching to the root user, so you can perform administrative tasks like installing or updating software. SU by itself will log in as the root user, however you should always use SU dash to log in as the root and load roots environmental variables for security reasons. When switching users, your command prompt will now update to indicate your new user. To go back to your old user, just type an exit. The most commonly used option with SU is the dash C, the command option. When you use dash C, it will run the command in a single go as a specified user, root if no user is specified, without manually logging in and out. The sudo command is similar to su with the command option, meaning it will run the command without logging out, except the major difference is su requires the root password, whereas sudo just requires your own user password. Number nine is the locate command, which is the simplest and quickest way to locate files and directories. Searching for a specific file is as simple as locate and the file name. Linux is case sensitive, so you need to pass it the dash i flag to ignore the case search. Locate is fast because it queries the database instead of manually searching through the file system. This may mean that newly created directories or files may not show up in the search because the database has yet to be updated. You can fix this by just running sudo update db. And finally, number 10 on our list is the man command. It allows us to read help files on many things, including command documentation. Many commands will usually have a dash dash help option built in that will print help text. However, if you need more help and don't want or can't use Google, try reading the command's man pages. You just type in the man and the command name. The man pages contain a wealth of information, including description of the command, explanation of all the options available, and sometimes useful examples of common usage. Navigating man pages is also quite simple. Use directional keys for up and down, or control F to page forward, or control B to page backwards. To exit documentation, just hit Q to quit. That concludes what I think make up a good list for your first 10 commands. They roughly fall into navigation with change directory, list, and present working directory. Manipulating files and directories with copy, move, remove, and make directory. Then some important miscellaneous commands, substitute user and sudo to switch users and execute commands as different user, locate to find files, 
and Matt for getting additional help. Let me know what you think by posting your comments, and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel.